not like this, not like this, but like this. You know the difference? Okay, because uh, just one or three speak like this, and uh, all cameras don't have don't have the the sound. Okay, don't, so like this, please. Thank you so much. Thank you very much all. Uh, Kaden Rudy and Andre Pollard, please raise your hands for questions. Hi Andre, um, Charles here from Daily Telegraph. Um, can I just ask you about your journey back to this point now and, and, and what happened in sort of, with winning that final in 2019 and COVID and France and maybe not getting the game time with Montpellier, then going to Leicester, and then this injury, and now, uh, you know, the two games away from winning the World Cup again. Yeah, Charles, uh, no, it's been an interesting four years. A uh, lot, of, lot of highs and a lot of lows, but more and more so the game it is. Um, Post-COVID, my injuries in France disrupted my, my stay here. Uh, would have loved to play more and be part of, or part of it more, but enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, since being back with Leicester, it's been great. Um, I think it's been great for myself, my, my, my family, and mentally it's just been really nice. We've really enjoyed the UK, so it's been great. And uh, unfortunately, that calf injury kept me out of the semi-finals in the, in the Prem, but uh, it was a great season last year, really enjoyed it. And then, yeah, again, ups and downs now the last few months, with not being selected and coming back in and all of that, but that's all in the past, we're right here now. It's all the World Cup semi-final week, and we're excited. Um, Alad Walters is someone that you know very well from his time with the Springboks and from this season at Leicester. Obviously, he's now with England this week. What do you think he's got in store for them this week ahead of the match against the Springboks this weekend? Oh, man. Alad, top man. Uh, we all love him a lot, and I'm sure he's going to do great with England going back and forward. And I'm sure they have some insights, uh, a few things away, but uh, that, that we expect so. But, I mean, it's not too much he can really give away. It's been quite a while, it's been four years, and uh, we've developed this is quite a lot, so yeah, it's going to be interesting weekend. And just finally from me, can I just ask you about Sia and um, him, him as a captain, and how important it is in modern day rugby for the captain to be sort of polite and diplomatic with the referees, and how good Sia is at that, and how, um, how sort of impressive his leadership is in that regard? Yeah, I think I mean, Sia has grown immensely over the years. Um, as a person, as a player, and especially as a captain. Um, we've always been a good leadership group within the squad that always supported him, but he's, uh, he's really just stepped up to a new level and he's, a, he's an unbelievable captain, he's inspirational, um, and it's all real. I think it's fake. He's a, he's a friendly guy, he's an inspirational guy. It just comes naturally and that's why we follow him. Because there's nothing fake about it. He's an honest, true man and uh, it's a great guy to play for. Jenna uh, from Television New Zealand. Um, I'll get to you, Kane, in just a moment. But, Andre, what is it about South Africa that no matter what's happening on and off the field, uh, rugby-wise or whatever, this Springbok team, when it comes to a Rugby World Cup, always fronts? Man, it's, it's just... Uh, I don't know. It's just the way we brought up. We love it. Um, it's not always been easy for a lot of our guys in our squad growing up, so when we get to this position and get to this point where there should be a lot of pressure on us, we, we, we refer back to it a lot. This is not really pressure, this is, this is more privilege to be a part of these occasions. And um, so It sums up the South African mentality, do you think? I think so. I think it's, uh, it's, it's something we grow up with. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, I think, I think our game model and the way we play the game suits World Cups pretty well, definitely. Um, but. Yeah, it's, it's just we're comfortable in this, in this environment and um, we've been under pressure off the field, growing up, whatever that may be, a lot of guys, and we all know the stories that's come from, from the previous World Cup. Um, but it's something, as a group, we just enjoy it, we really just enjoy the pressure. Uh, we, we always say it's a privilege to have this pressure on our shoulders, playing for our country, and uh, we just enjoy it. And, and Kanan, just quickly for you, I know you'll be focused on England, but... Any thoughts at all to possibly, possibly facing the All Blacks in a World Cup final? Uh, I think, you know, um, we, we are laser focused on the task at hand. You know, we don't have to get, want to get ahead of ourselves, you know. So, yeah, I think all prep is, is for this weekend. You know, a semi-final is very important. You know, no one wants to play in that third and fourth place playoff. So, I think you have to get past the semi-final first before you can focus on the final. 
Andre, can I ask you when you when the calf injury uh, and the team selection, how close was that? Was that uh, and how disappointed were you if you were disappointed um, at not making the initial selection? Uh, yeah, of course. Very disappointed, but um, no, it was a it was a tight call. Um, it was a time sensitive thing. Uh, we pushed, we pushed our hardest. We tried our best, but I was just a couple of weeks, probably just too late to show the to show the coaches that I was fit enough. So it was a very very disappointing time, of course. But uh, yeah, everything worked out. Unfortunately for Malcolm, massive loss for us, but gave me an opportunity again to come back. So yeah, well, it was close, but uh, just not in time. Andre, Alex Lowe from, from the Times. I just wonder, as, as in fact, maybe for both of you, but as players who work under a coaching team who you know, certainly in the last few months have shown innovative ideas, maybe, maybe like the 7-1, or spotted unusual opportunities on the field, whether it's um, the charge down or, or calling a, a scrum from a mark, how do you react to those ideas when they're given to you as, as players, and what confidence does it give you that you, you have a coaching staff who are who are putting so much thought and time into that that kind of detail that maybe other coaches don't have the time for because they're they're busy trying to build a, a team like like England have been. I think the key thing you said there is uh, is the work they put in. Nothing that they do is just for, for for no reason. It's all thought of. It's all meticulously planned, and they've earned a, like we trust them because they've earned. A, They've earned our trust over the years from what they've done and how they prepare. So when they come up with these ideas, there's no questions asked. They give us a reason why we do whatever we do, and then we just back it, and we're all in, all in, and we all just trust each other, players to coaches and coaches to players, and it's just the trust that we have in each other. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, Andre, can I just ask you, um, Rasmus just means in the fact that they will most definitely some beef from England this week and in a good way like Rassi said is that the way how you guys got the message from the leadership and how do you guys react this weekend against England can I also ask you in the same breath um, ideally a semi-final at the World Cup would have been nice in South Africa what do you say to the locals now do they support South Africa or do they support England and Kenan just briefly have you played against England and there's a temptation according to Rassi to bring you into the squad are you ready for the task this weekend sorry can you just repeat that first question is Rassi says there's definitely going to be beef from England this weekend in a good way he says are you guys ready for that beef that's coming your way this day? because apparently they've got a bone to pick with you guys absolutely um, and of course that's, that's the case I mean you could see on their faces four years ago the disappointment um, I've been part of a squad that's fell out in a, in a semi-final in a, in a World Cup and it sits with you the rest of your life there's a lot of things you look back and regret and maybe thought you, that you could have done differently and uh, I'm sure they'll come with that mindset um, this weekend. I think they'll be ruthless. I think they'll take their intensity and physicality to a whole new level. But that being said, we're prepared for that. We're ready for that and, and we enjoy that. That's always the part of the game that we love. And when, if it's going to be beef, it's going to be beef. It's stage rugby, it's 80 minutes and we've got to just go out and play the game. Oh yes, and the supporters, um, I think it'll be tough to ask the French to support us after the weekend, but I mean, it was an epic battle, one for the ages, and um, yeah, France was an unbelievable team, the utmost respect for them uh, and their nation, so they can support it if they want, I guess, going forward, but it'll be great if they could support us, yeah. Uh, yeah, to answer your question, Percy, uh, we, I played uh, a few minutes at the end of the year to where we're coming back from my injury, so yeah, I've, I've got seeing what, the, what England can do and, you know, being part of, of the team as, as long as I, often it's not long, but yeah, um, yeah, I think um, England is a, is a very good team, um, but yeah, you know, for me, it's just when I, if I get the opportunity, you know, I would always make the most of it, but yeah, that's all under the coaches, you know, like Andre said, we trust the coaches and, you know, whatever plans they have. And uh, I think all of us are bought into to the plans the coaches has and, and whatever is needed, they'll put the right squad out, out there to go out there on Saturday. Um, Andre, Kanan, good evening, gents. Um, firstly, Andre, for you, just talk us through with your, your, your working partnership with Marnie as fly-offs and how dynamic it's actually made um, the, the, the box look from first off to a second off. And then, Kanan, um, for you, how, do you how, much, uh, how much inspiration do you take from a, such a bloodied yet brave performance from a guy like Jesse Creel? 
No, I'm so first, just, just I can't praise Marnie enough for the way he's been playing lately. He's been in unbelievable form, and he's he's taken on to the to the pressure that comes with playing fly for South Africa. He's he's been handling that so well. Um, it's been really amazing to watch. I've known Marnie since he was very young, and uh, for me, the the best thing about Marnie is he's not changed one bit since that young guy I met eight years ago. He's just a humble guy, works for the team, works extremely hard, and uh, I think he brings a beautiful, lovely, dynamic way of playing towards us as a team and it's a lovely thing and it's something we've all embraced and enjoyed as well so um, whatever our roles are myself or him whenever we play um, it's all towards the team of course and whatever we can do best we'll, we'll, we'll try and do every weekend yeah um jc obviously played an amazing game on the weekend you know 13 is a very uh, important position on defense you know and and like they say defense wins you world cup so a monster performance from him, and yeah, just you know, being able to to see that, and you know, obviously taking a lot of you know confidence out of you know a guy a guy that can can go out there and do it on the biggest stage in one of the one of the biggest games. In, in you know, it doesn't get any bigger than a quarterfinal in a World Cup. You know, so yeah, just for me, just being able to 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 see this and experience this, you know, and take as much info from it, and you know, in training weeks and see how he carries himself as well is a lot for me as a young guy. Andre, uh, obviously a lot of different motivating factors going into the semi-final. All Blacks hooker Dane Cole said yesterday he doesn't want to play in the third and fourth player because it's quite shit. Would you agree? It is. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a game you want to play. Unfortunately, I've had to play in one of those before. Um, it's, yeah, it's terrible, but our minds aren't going there at all. We're just focusing on Saturday and getting that one. We have about four minutes left, so let's take about two questions. Thank you so much. Can I, let me just check with you on Wikipedia or on your CV, what do you write here, or your specialist um, centre, or was it wing this weekend, perhaps, against England? <laughs> no, uh, I didn't write anything on there. Uh, like, uh, like I said, you know, whatever plans the coaches had, we trust them, and, you know, they all feel the right squad to go out there and, and do the job for us. Uh, like I said, you know, I've played a lot at, 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 at wing, I've played a lot in our, my two games in the World Cup at centre. But yeah, like I said, whatever the coach needs and, and you know, a lot of versatility to have in the team, you know, whatever the plans might be going with a 6-2 or 5-3 or 7-1, you know, that we have a lot of versatility and at the end of the day, whatever is needed, uh, the coaches will, will choose the right squad. Hi, Andre. Um, Springboks have had some great locks, obviously, in, in history, but where does Eben rank with them? And uh, any insights into what he's like behind the scenes? Oh man, he's, he's of course right up there. Like you said, we've had some unbelievable arcs in the, in the past. Uh, privilege of playing with Bucky's and, uh, and Victor at their, towards the end of their careers. Um, but even it's special. He's, um, he's, he's such a big part of our squad. Yes, he's massive for us as a player, but I think what he does off the field sometimes people don't always realise. His leadership, his calmness. He's actually a very, very chill guy. He wouldn't say that, but <laughs> um, very calm. And I think it rubs off on all of us, especially the younger guys as well. <laughs> Seeing his calmness, it's, uh, it's something very important towards us. And um, yeah, his experience is, in is invaluable, and it's something we'll definitely have to draw on, uh, on the Saturday.